Today, though, sports facilities have become an important part of our life. They have become the mainstay of a lot of communities. And so we want to look at sports facilities and how those can uh, be of interest to us. Now, sports facilities comes in a variety of flavors. Could include hockey arenas, and we know that hockey arenas are a big part of Canadian culture. There's over 2,500 hockey arenas from coast to coast in Canada. First hockey arena was built probably in either Quebec City or Montreal in the late 1800s, a covered hockey arena. Since then, we have many that have been built. Some of them are aging, some are new and modern, some of them need attention for audio, some work just fine. We have soccer arenas, which have become more and more common, and you no doubt will find one in your community as well. Then we have stadiums, football stadiums, uh, large and small. Uh, high schools even have some stadiums, but mainly universities, and the major centers such as Olympic Stadium and the other stadiums that are in some of the major cities in Canada. We have field houses that are connected with universities. Generally, these are used for basketball, for other events, track and field, and indoor events where the university can compete in intercollegiate activities. Running tracks form part of a lot of the sports facilities. They may be part of the stadium setup or they may be part of the field house. And then, of course, gymnasiums. Every school, every high school has a gymnasium. They need audio as well. We have aquatic centers as well, and these present their own unique challenges that are unique to that type of environment. And then equestrian facilities, both indoor and out, not to mention all the other facilities that form the sports world. Now, what are the challenges? Generally, sports facilities are very reverberant spaces. A lot of flat surfaces, a lot of areas that are going to reflect sound and make it hard for us to have speech intelligibility. Now, there's a need to cover the areas. There need to be a partial coverage of some areas for some events and all of the areas for some events and anything in between. Needs to be adaptability for different setups, enough power to be able to serve a big crowd and yet articulate enough to be able to handle a smaller crowd as well. Because of using so many speakers, the sound is going to arrive at different times, so time delays are necessary for intelligibility. Then all of this has to be able to be controlled. Have to think about what content is going to be input, whether it's going to be the house sound, whether it's going to be events happening on the field, or maybe a private little interview that's going to be broadcast through the whole house. There's indoor and outdoor durability that's required. Even some indoor facilities, sports complexes, require outdoor equipment because of the nature of the environment. And then, of course, we're all concerned about safety. Let's look at indoor and outdoor. We think about durability, and that comes into play, especially in Canada. We have some very harsh environments. Very hot in the summertime with the sun beating down on speakers. Very cold in the wintertime. And oftentimes, even in the wintertime, the speakers and the equipment must perform up to par. And we do have equipment that is durable and actually designed to be weather resistant. And they have to be rugged enough to perform year in, year out, over the long term without failure. There also must be an ease of installation. Where do you install these? How do you install them? Because they're going to be required in a variety of locations and some challenging areas where you have to install the speaker and it's probably the only place it'll work. The quality of the sound is of course important. It must reproduce what you want it to without distortion and be articulate enough to be understood. Let's look at aquatic centers. They do have challenges. 
Oftentimes, aquatic centers are very large facilities, uh, hard surfaces, very little in the way of something to absorb the sound, lots of glass, lots of concrete, and of course the water, which acts like a bounce for the sound. One of the best ways of controlling the sound is to be able to keep it low to the field and be able to shoot across the pool. And we find that line array speakers, such as the ones depicted here, are effective in covering the area. And they can be fed from one side across to the seating area and cover not just the pool, but also the spectator areas as well. Let's look at the challenge of conventional speakers. And we know that a conventional speaker puts sound out in like a ball of energy. And it spreads out 90 degrees in every direction, but it also reverberates off of all flat surfaces. And either really harshly, or at least to some degree, it will be distorted when it arrives at the hearer. You may hear a distinct echo. You may just hear a muffled sound. And this creates an environment where it's really difficult to pay attention to, and it's tedious to listen to. What do we use? Well, because there's many hard surfaces, the challenge is to keep the sound off those hard surfaces. So you want to think about speakers that are going to control the sound, control the dispersion, and that could be controlling the vertical dispersion, even controlling the horizontal dispersion. And so you might want to use line arrays like we explained in aquatic centers. Or maybe you want to use a line array, such as one that's built up with different cells. And in this case, we're looking at a line array that's built up with multiple cells. And those have their own dispersion factors. For example, it might be a long throw cell that's 5 degrees in the vertical and 90 degrees in the horizontal. Or it could be a short throw, which is 15 degrees vertical and 90 degrees horizontal. So those would be stacked appropriately aiming at the audience, and then time aligned, and also uh, powered with the energy enough to make the sound reach the audience at the appropriate level. Line array speakers, as we mentioned, keep the sound contained. And so this demonstrates the way a line array speaker works. It sends the sound out in a beam in the horizontal plane for, for a distance. And so if it's aimed at the audience, you're not going to get the reverberance off of the ceiling or off the floor of the seats. It's going to reach the audience and be very clear, very direct, and very intelligible. We also have variable dispersion speakers, similar to a line array but able to be grouped together in groups of four so that you can change the angles. For example, our new HX7 will go from a flat face, a zero degree dispersion on the vertical to 100 degrees in the horizontal, and that zero degrees can be modified in 15 degree increments for 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and even 60 degrees. Our HX5, which many of you may be familiar with, and it's been used in sports facilities all across Canada, comes in black or white, similar to the HX7, but it's a 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees vertical, and 100 degrees horizontal. It doesn't quite reach that 100, or, or rather that one, uh, zero degree on the vertical, such as the HX5. The HX7, of course, will handle more power than the HX5. And if you look at the way the speakers are aligned, it has two woofers, and it has a plain front a compression driver that sends the high frequency out in a flat plane to the audience and reaches further into the sound field than the HX5. And the HX5 has the tweeters down one side, the woofer in the middle, and the base port on the other side. How do you know where to put the speakers? Well, there are many ways of doing it. Some people guess, but that's not the best way. 
one of the best ways is to use a program such as Ease. Now, I'm not depicting Ease in this case, but Ease is probably the best way because you can take into consideration all of the surfaces in the environment, all of the angles, the texture of the surfaces, and the absorbency of those surfaces. And then you can model out the way the sound is going to respond in that environment. Of course, this means you have to get plans for the facility. You need the architectural plans. You may even need to, to visit the facility to be able to see what the different scenarios are and where the hanging points can be and where the audience is going to be. But in this case, I'm using the example of Ease Focus 2. This is kind of a neat little program. It's free for download. You can download also the software for individual speakers and then can model them in. And it's kind of uh, cool because it will even model the speakers automatically to fit the environment. And then you can see what angles the boxes have to be to be able to reach the facility. In this case, we're showing two HX7s facing each way in a facility and two HX7s on the sides, but they're one on each side and one on the other side. And so then you can see the dispersion in the bottom frame to see how the coverage is going to be. A very useful tool, and by all means, use at least some tool to be able to model the speakers to make sure that we're not just guessing at where they go and really suffering the consequences at the end. Another useful tool is the support that TOA Canada supplies. We have a technical department that provides assistance for design. It can also do some ease programming for you. It can uh, provide the modeling of the audio and even intercom systems so that the facility is covered. In addition to that, we provide after-sale configuration support. So if you're having a little challenge with the software and wonder how should I set it up and how should I time things, etc., give us a call. Our technical department is there for your support and be able to make sure that the facility responds the way that you want it to. Another challenge that we have with sports facilities is the adaptability to fit different locations. Uh, outdoor facilities sometimes are a real challenge. In this case, we have an overhanging roof that you can see in the bottom left that you can hang speakers off of, but sometimes you don't have a roof to hang speakers off of. The sound has to come from the back, from behind, and up high so that you can reach the entire audience. That uh, presents a real challenge, and you have to think about zoning and how to process the equipment and what energy to drive each speaker at so that you get the, the desired coverage without getting a lot of reverberance and a lot of echoing. It must also be adaptable to fit events. In this case, we have uh, events taking place on the court, and maybe there's zoning. Maybe it's entirely one side of the arena that's being covered, and so you need to direct the sound to that facility or that side. You must also look at ambient noise levels, how much sound there's going to be, and you may even want to think about uh, how can I compensate for that automatically. And so there are ways of uh, compensating for ambient noise and to raise the sound as the crowds build up so that it keeps pace with the environment. You want to look at specific areas of coverage. And so maybe you want to look at something like a steerable line array as depicted in the center of the screen. The beam can be focused at a specific area, can be spread out for a bigger area. It can focus on uh, a playing surface, or the beam can even be split to cover two areas. So our steerable line arrays are kind of unique in that way. They use digital processing to create the steering. We also have mechanically steerable line arrays as well that can accomplish similar activities, but of course they're installed at once and it's fixed without having to uh, climb up and change it mechanically. 
Then we want to look at the processing. As we mentioned, you may want to look at ambient noise control. And so we have our processors that can do that. We can tone out the room, we can set up the room and the environment for the best sound possible for that environment. And we use processors, DSP processors for that. And it samples the room, analyzes it, and adjusts it according to what is needed in that room. And the ambient noise controllers can sample the room for the sound level and can ramp up the sound as the crowds build up so that it keeps pace with the environment. And so things that are, are being presented are not too loud for a small crowd and not too silent for a large crowd. Sound delay is a big challenge in an environment like a sports facility because you're listening to sound that's coming from different point sources. There might be a big cluster in the center of the field. There might be fill speakers on the sides or on the ends. And of course, the sound, if it comes out of the center cluster in the arena, you're going to hear that, but you're also going to hear the fill speakers. Now, if they arrive directly from the speakers and they're all wired together and they're all producing the same sound at the same time, it's going to be like an echo and it's going to be very difficult to listen to. So if you look at the red letters, it says sound heard or, or sound should arrive at the same time to be heard clearly. Well, if you listen to that over speakers that are spaced differently, uh, you would see that it's hard to listen to. So what you do, you delay the nearer speaker so that the sound arrives at the same time. So now you're hearing the exactly same thing coming from two different speakers, but you're hearing it at exactly the same time or close enough that it's not going to cause distortion. How do we do that? Well, in a lot of our DSP processors, we have sound delay. And if you look at the configuration, this is a screenshot from some of our processors. You have certain options and the delay options. You can set it up by distance, such as by meters, feet, or inches. You could also set it up, if you look, by, by milliseconds. And you can adjust it either way. So if you know what, what the sound delay is and what you want to accomplish, you can set it up by milliseconds. Or you can set it up by distance, and it's uh, very easy to do. If you know that you're 100 feet away from the center cluster and you're only 20 feet away from the near fill speaker, then you can adjust it accordingly. So you set it up at 80 feet, and so it uh, will allow the sound to arrive at the same time. Now, these are general guidelines for setting up things. Uh, ultimately, you'll want to be in the environment to listen to see how it's reacting and see, is it articulate enough? Am I able to live with the way I've set it up? So like I said, you have the, the center clusters, you have fill speakers, can you hear it accurately? The best way to do that is actually go into the environment where you're going to hear the sound. So go in the bleachers, put the sound on, and listen to it. However, sound doesn't necessarily indicate 100%. One of the best ways to do it is to use a click track. Uh, very effective is to download a metronome onto your electronic device, whether it's a tablet or a cell phone. And then you can play that click track. You can vary it from 1 16th of a second all the way up to one click every two seconds. Put that on the audio system. Go into the stands where you want to hear the sound. Listen to whether the clicks are coming together or they're separate. If the clicks happen at different times, you know you need to do some sound delay. So you adjust it slightly, still not good enough. You adjust it, finally get it to exactly where you want, where the clicks are heard at the same time from both sets of speakers. This is very important for sports facilities because it depends on how satisfied the customers are coming to watch the game. At the end of the day, you also want to be able to control the system. You may want to use an iPad app to control 
to uh, vary the sounds, to adjust things, maybe uh, pick selected scenes that you want to highlight, and then can adjust the sound on the fly, as it were. Or maybe you want to have hard controls, such as volume controls or controls where you can select things, adjust volumes, up and down, select cross points, etc. This is also necessary for sports facilities because you have different events happening at different parts of the arena. You want to be able to accommodate those. And then, of course, on the field events, you need something to be able to transmit the sound to the sound system. TOA has a long history of dealing with wireless microphones. We have everything from entry level all the way up to performance products that are ideal for the application in sports facilities. We do have webinars that deal exclusively on wireless microphones, and those are, is a, the webinar on wireless microphones and even on wired microphones are two that you might want to tune into in the future to see the applications of wireless microphones in these environments. Recently, the Blue Jays had their home opener, and maybe you saw in the news, they had what's uh, often referred to as the mag and bag check, is uh, magnetic scanning and checking bags, because there is security issues that involve sports facilities and larger sports events. And it may well be that in the future, the PA system and the distributed PA found in these facilities may form a part of the emergency communication system in the event of, of uh, some circumstance where everyone has to be noticed. Recent hardware manufacturing guidelines were released by ULC Canada, and these codes mirror the UL hardware guidelines that are found or used in the US as well. Uh, future hardware used for emergency communication systems may require adherence to these codes. However, this is all under the jurisdiction of the authority having jurisdiction. So someone has to determine whether those things are necessary in a sports facility or not, and how they're going to be used in the event of a circumstance. So looking at safety, there are a number of ways you can deal with safety. Of course, we do provide components and systems for emergency messages, and we have speaker line supervision so you know that the message has been delivered. We do have uh, horns and speakers for the secondary areas in a facility. Some may refer to it as the base building. So you need to be able to get sound into the dressing rooms, into the corridors, into the vomitoriums, on the ramps, the stairwells, etc. So all of these have to be addressed and you have to know that the sound has been delivered the way you want it to. And so TOA has been active in positioning our speakers and our equipment for these new standards that are coming. We have a lot of our equipment that's uh, ULC certified and UL certified for various applications and we're looking seriously going forward with this uh, emergency communication program and how we can meet the needs for Canadians in sports facilities. So safety is a big challenge and we look at some of the facilities that uh, require safety, some of the larger facilities. We know that the Beijing Olympics TOA was very active in providing uh, safety communication and safety messaging for those facilities. And oftentimes what was used is our SX2000, and it's ideal for creating a, an ultra-reliable large-scale facility for, for large complexes, including large sports facilities. So I want to thank you for attending, and I want to thank you for your time that you have uh, spent listening to this presentation.